Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And to highlight Asians in our own community, I sat down with a few people from different age groups and genders to talk about painful memories of the past and how they've turned those into powerful messages today. These were long discussions, reflective, emotional. And one thing that everyone agrees on is that only by having these conversations can there be healing and hope for the future. My first memory of racism was when I was in elementary school, but I was walking home from school and two boys followed me home and they had this chant about Ching Chong Charlie. One of them was throwing things at me. I remember getting hit and I acted like it was no big deal, like they weren't getting to me, I, I didn't care. But then as soon as I got inside the house, I cried. My first experience with racism didn't happen until later in life. It didn't happen until I was in Los Angeles and I'm an actor and um, I was meeting with the manager and the manager had said to me, I think we should change your name. We can't tell what you are. That's interesting. Why would you want me to be Nico Chang? I'm not even Chinese. I'm Filipino. Early enough where I don't remember, it's not like there was one event. But, you know, being called names um, simply because of my race, they would go, you know, ha ha, you know. As a kid, you don't know whether it's just being made fun of or whether it's racially motivated or whether it's hate-driven. I think my first memory of racism was like as early as preschool. There was this one kid that was in my class who used to give me a nickname and he nicknamed me China. And it's weird because I'm not Chinese, I'm Korean. Honestly, like at the age of preschool, like being there just didn't sit right with me like ever. <laughs> and I remember like coming to my mom and like telling her like, I don't think they should be calling me China. Like, I don't like it. When I look back at the past, it was rough. You, you feel like you're not being treated fairly and you don't know why. And then if you figure out why and it's because of race, it's even worse. I would say I grew an inferiority complex. And so um, I always felt not as good or not the, the same as everyone. I wasn't angry then. I'm more angry now because it makes me, it, it, it almost makes all the hard work that I do, it makes it almost like it doesn't matter. I remember wishing that I could get uh, freckles on my face and that my hair was lighter. Uh, I wanted to change me. I wanted to look more like everybody else. Growing up like from immigrant parents and like having that super Asian culture, like we were kind of taught to just like stay quiet and like not create a lot of trouble. So I think what my parents wanted me to do was just, just like don't make a scene out of it and kind of just like go or like get over it like yourself. I'm more passionate about, about embracing my Asian culture, heritage, and putting that out there and letting people know like, yeah, I'm Asian. My last name is DeJesus, I'm Filipino, and I'm an actor, and I can do just as much as, as anyone else out there. Me and my brother always talk about how we're probably better in sports because of it, because I've always had a chip on my shoulder, you know, to prove that I'm as good or better than everyone else. For me, growing up, there was a lot of pressure to to be the best and that is very draining <laughs> and it's a it's an impossible expectation to live up to i wanted to prove people wrong so i worked on being strong and it, it took work well, i'm um, the president of my asian student union at school and i organized a march in carlsbad that rallied over 500 people and we were able to just march together in solidarity to just give support to our community and be able to stand together. So I really hope that I am one of the new generations of Asian people that are able to speak out. I think it's super necessary in order to, you know, spread awareness and just educate others around you. And by speaking out, it does that a lot. You can shatter the mold. That's what I hope. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for whenever people see me on stage, see me on film or on television. I definitely feel like Becoming an attorney has given me a voice. Now Asians are more empowered. They feel more empowered and more justified in speaking out. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of your Asian heritage. Um, you know, s stick up for yourself. 
but it's also hard. There's nothing wrong with being Asian. My hope for the future is that we're able to just see each other as human beings instead of looking at each other as like skin colors and like identifying each other as different stereotypes. And hopefully by doing that, we're able to like avoid these conflicts and these really unfortunate um, events that happen just dedicated toward race. I don't expect for my grandkids to not experience bias or racism. Um, they will, but maybe less, um, more informed. Just work on being the best you and don't let other people's stereotypes affect you and who you are. Even though you're not an Asian American, like I just want you to understand that like it's we're humans too. The way that I fight it is by proving people wrong. You tell me that an Asian person can't do this, you better believe I'm gonna do it. You tell me that I can't do, I, I, I'm not allowed to be in this place, well, guess what, I'm gonna be in this place and I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna live in it. I think times are changing and people are, they're starting to stand up for themselves now and it's been a long time coming. Those are certainly not easy conversations to have and I wanna thank Erica, Era, Nico and George for trusting me to share their stories. You know, there is a lot of hope for the future. Finally, Asians are getting a voice. They're not afraid to speak up or report hate crimes, but it has taken a long time to get to this point and have these candid and sometimes painful conversations. On this journey, I've reflected a lot about my own childhood. I remember being about eight or nine years old and waiting in line in gymnastics class. All the girls had on leotards, so our skin, you know, pretty exposed. And I tried to go up to talk to a group of girls. One of them looked at me and said, with disgust on her face, she moved away and said, my mom said not to play with people who have your color skin. And you know, four days later, decades later, I remember that as clear as day. I remember what I was wearing and I remember how much it hurt and also how confused I was. And here's a picture, Carlo, you know, I wanted to fit in, I put in blue contacts, you know, made my hair big like Madonna. I mean, I think all of us kind of have that need to try and want to fit in, but um, especially talking to so many Asians of all different, uh, for different genders and different age groups and there's one, there's so many commonalities and so many common themes that, that we have in our culture. And I think it's great that we're trying, that we're starting to speak up and speak out. And I think it's great too. One of the great things about it is, I think a lot of people who inflict this pain on others simply are ignorant. And I don't mean in a mean way. I mean, they haven't been exposed to people and understand what they're going through, hearing the kind of pain they've been caused. Unfortunately, I think there are some people out there who are just mean and evil. Sure. And we're not going to be able to do much about them. But these conversations yeah. are going to open the eyes of a lot of people. And I'm really grateful for you because I know this was really a journey. It was pretty, it was pretty draining for me as well to just kind of come face to face with all of these things that so many other people share. And it's nice. It's kind of nice to know, oh, wait, hey, you all felt that too. Because we have learned to just kind of, you know, squash it down and yeah. not recognize it. So. Not anymore. Yeah. Right? Still, exactly. Still ahead. Why two big pieces <laughs> of legislation for the Biden White House may face a delayed vote in Congress. Plus, online claims.